introduce to you a spiritual father of Bridge of Life. Terry has laid the foundation of our church to accelerate it into the future. He's a world traveler and coveted speaker. And we're honored not only to have him, but to know him as one of our own. And you can't say Terry King without Linda. There's always a support there. And love that man, too. Known him now for 44 years, I guess. And he still remains faithful. <laughs> Welcome, Terry. Thank you, Tim. Good morning, good morning. Please turn with me, with me in your Bible to the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 10. So good to be here this morning. Can you say amen? amen. Just to be uh, in the house of the Lord and the worship, the, the presence of God. There is something special when we gather together. The Bible says, wherever, where there are two or more gathered together, I am with you in the midst. Matthew chapter 10, verse 16. I will say, I'm not sure I've ever heard anyone preach on this, from this verse before. It's actually part of the first commission. Uh, we often talk about the great commission from the, from the end of Matthew and the end of Mark. And, and yet there were many, many times, and Jesus said much the same kind of thing, sending out, preparing the disciples for, for, for their, their extension, expansion of the kingdom of God. And uh, this is actually an introduction uh, that, that Jesus gives to a, a passage where he's challenging the disciples to take the kingdom of God with them. Matthew chapter 10, verse 16. Behold, I'm sending you out as sheep in the midst of wolves, so be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Wise as serpents, innocent as doves. I'm intrigued by the verse. It seems to me to be a little bit of a, I mean, like a little confused, almost contradictory, um, particularly from our perspective uh, when we think uh, of, well, sheep, I guess that's pretty easy. Um, he, he calls us sheep in many cases. And when I, when I, I, in this context, I think what, what, the reason why he's t telling us to go as sheep is because there's an innocence to sheep. There's, a, there's a, 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 a harmlessness to them. Their only defense really is to run away. They're not out there fighting, they're out there resting and just enjoying the, the protection of their shepherd. And then he gets more specific, in the midst of wolves, so be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. I'm very intrigued that Jesus, Jesus, these are the words of Jesus that he would say to be wise as serpents. And I actually had to do some homework on this one because uh, I, just, it, I, I, don't, I don't want to become, I don't act like a snake. <laughs> Amen. And it is interesting, and I won't go into detail right now, that that. In the, in the time that Jesus lived, even, even back in the Old Testament times, the perspective on serpents, on snakes, was quite different than it would be today. I think we almost always immediately make the connection between the snake in the garden and, and the devil and temptation, whereas uh, in ancient times, snakes were considered to be wise, crafty creatures, very clever. They operated under the radar, literally. <laughs> But they also were always aware of what was going on. They, 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 their defense was often just, just being able to clever, cleverly run away. And, and then be innocent as doves. I'm going to come back to that word, innocent, in a moment. Just bear out. That's the word of Jesus. Be wise as serpents and, and innocent as doves. And I want to suggest that this particular charge from Jesus, as he's preparing the groundwork to, to send us out into the world around, to take the kingdom of God to, the, to those around us, this particular exhortation is probably more relevant today than it has ever been. And I, and I want to challenge you with it, uh, encourage you in the process, I hope, but also challenge you with you to, to be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. These are perilous times. And uh, I think it's more important than ever that we focus our attention on the kingdom of God. Um, you, you notice I've already said that word, that, that little phrase probably a dozen times already. Well, I'm going to say it over and over again because that's what I believe the Lord is drawing us towards. And, and, and the, the truth is, you can't think about two things at one time. You can't be focused on two things at one time. Um, and I, I want to encourage you with several thoughts as I prepare to come back to this idea of being commissioned by the Lord to take the kingdom of God to those around us. I want to say, first of all, number one, God is never, how often? Never surprised. He's never surprised. And, and I think one of the ways we tend to, we try to communicate that is it's pretty complicated theology, omniscience, God knows everything, omnipotence, he, he, he's all-powerful, uh, predestination, etc. I think sometimes we, we can get lost in some of the depth of all that and miss the point. God is, how often? Never surprised. And, and sometimes the way we communicate that is we say, well, God is in control. 
Has any, have you ever heard anyone say that recently? This, all this virus stuff going on, everything else going on around us in the world today. Well, I, I want to suggest to you God, is, God can control, but he doesn't control. That's, that's, not, that's, not, good tr- that's, not, that's not truth from Scripture. Uh, in fact, it sounds more like to me like fatalism than it does a biblical worldview. God is in control. It's kind of a way of saying, well, well it doesn't really matter. God's going God's to control in any way and everything's going to work out. Well, again, he, he is certainly in control of himself, but he doesn't control. In fact, he does give us a free will. And, and we have the, the privilege of exercise. He gives us the choice to make a choice. He gives you the choice to make a choice. And so where, where God could be in control, he gives us those choices. And that's why, quite simply, there's so much pain in the world. You, you probably have contemplated before. Why is there so much pain? Why, why so much destruction? So much, so much hurt and, 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 and et cetera in the world? Well, it's because God gave us free choice. Not, God doesn't cause those things to happen. We bring those things either upon ourselves or, or to others. And uh, I want to encourage you that, that God's purpose will always be accomplished. Even, even though he chooses not to control, he could. He doesn't. He doesn't control. He's not a controlling God. He, will, he has established his purposes, and those purposes will come to pass. Uh, the, the scriptures are very clear. And I think the word purpose is maybe a better word than, than the will of God or the, or the plan of God. Some people talk about, I want to be in the plan of God. When I, when I hear the word plan, I kind of think of like a blueprint. Dan, I'm sure you've looked at a lot of plans before. All the details are there, all the, you know, all the, all the dimensions, all the, all the directions. Uh, and, and I think we want to believe that somehow that's the way God is. God's got everything all planned out. Boom, 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 boom. And we better stay in the plan. Uh, if we miss... How many of you were raised to pray when you go to bed at night? Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul. What nonsense. I'm sorry. It just is. It's, just, it's, just not, it's not true. God's not waiting there to see if he stir off, stray off his plan a little bit so he can slap you on the head. Not, but he will accomplish. He has a purpose for your life. Uh, I heard a quote the other day. It's great. Mark Twain. Mark Twain said, he's rumored to have said, that the two most important days in your life are the day you were born and the day you found your reason for being born. I would add to that the day I was born again and the day I married my wife and <laughs> a couple other days, but... Why are you here? What's his pur- He's accomplishing his purpose in you. Romans 8, 28. We know that those who love God, to, to those who love God, all things work together for good. To those who are called according to his purpose. He's working out that purpose. He's, he's accomplishing that purpose in you. And I would suggest that, that, that in the midst of, of, of difficult times, often our greatest opportunities, I'm talking about the kingdom of God, I'm talking about who you are as a son, a daughter of God, our greatest opportunities arise when things are really going bad. And so instead of bemoaning and, and, and getting caught up in, in, in all the negativity around us, and, and, and again, I'm not, I'm not saying that the things aren't, bad things aren't, they are happening, uh, Look for the opportunities. And there's so many illustrations. Probably my favorite is, is Joseph. And if you don't know the story of Joseph, go back and read those last 10 chapters or so of the book of Genesis. What an amazing story. Joseph receives a vision from God, a dream from God. God shows him what his purpose is. And his, his, his reward for having a, a statement of faith, I'm going to do what God's called me to do, is he gets sold into slavery by his brothers. Talk about betrayal. That word was very strong for this last week, wasn't it? His own brothers, and then, of course, ends up being falsely accused, in jail, uh, forgotten when, when he gave an accurate prophecy, and, and, and yet, finally, he becomes the prime minister, if you will, the, the, the ruler of all of Egypt. Only, only Pharaoh was over him. The point is, when, when, when Pharaoh died, when, and more importantly, when, when their dad died, J- Joseph's dad and his brothers, when, they, were, they were petrified. Now that dad's not here any longer, Joseph's going to get his revenge. But here's what the words of Joseph are. I, I hope they'll... We'll speak to you today. Genesis. This is an easy one to remember, in fact. Genesis 50, 20. One of my favorite verses. As for you, you meant evil against me. And I think we can say that. There are those around us who want to work evil against us. Certainly the enemy of our souls. The, the, Satan himself wants to work evil against us. But God. Whenever you see but God, you want to pause for a minute. <laughs> but God meant it for good to bring it about that many people should be kept alive as they are today. In the, in the midst of Joseph's darkness and his, his trouble, his struggle, he found a way to trust in God, to believe that God was going to work out his purpose. He wasn't controlling, but he was certainly working through the very situations that were, that were coming against Joseph. And, and I want to encourage you, the, those things are, are it's happening today. If you, only, if, you, if you only can get your focus off the, off the negativity and off, off, off the, all the bad news, and then keep your heart, and I'll come back to that in a moment. Uh, number two, I want to make an appeal to you. I want to challenge you. Have you become a sign of the end time? 
person. I mean you, each one of us. I'm, I'm pointing my finger at myself. And I'm going to read a verse of scripture I think will identify that. I mean, it's kind of an interesting thought. Are we in the end times? I, it's, a, it's a tough one. I, I, I mean, when I was in college, how many ever years ago was? I guess it's almost 50, 50 years ago. Yeah, 48 years ago. Uh, the, the, the commencement speaker at our Bible college uh, to the, to the graduating class ahead of me gave the five things, that, or ten things, ten things you, all, you, should, you should remember when we were graduating from college and going into ministry. And one of them was have a 20-year plan. Now, I want to tell you, in, in, in our circles, 48 years ago, that was heresy. Because we were convinced that Jesus was coming now. Um, and to have a 20-year plan was saying, that, well, I guess you don't think Jesus is coming today, then do you? Well, yeah, he didn't. <laughs> And, and, and the challenge is, uh, what day are we living in? I know for sure there are several clear evidences of the, of the end times. And one of them is right here in the book of, of Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 3. The time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching. Does that sound familiar? Yeah. But having itching ears, what a word picture. What a word picture. But having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions. From such turn away from listening, they're listening to the truth and wandering off into myths. Wow. Uh, Wow, that does sound a lot like today, doesn't it? And I wonder, why is it? Have you ever thought about yourself sometimes? The hardest person to ever evaluate in in the world is yourself. Have you ever wondered why, I'll confess, why am I so inclined to be drawn away into negative things? Myths is what he calls them here. Um, Skepticism, fear, suspicions, conspiracy theories. Why are those things so attractive to us? Why is the news always so negative? Have you noticed that the news is, is negative most of the time? And in fact, I'll confess, if I'm watching the news, and, and often some of the, some of the channels end their evening news with a, with a good story, I usually turn the good story, I don't want to hear the good news, that's, that's boring. I, I'm just saying, I, I, there's a reason why they put good news out, it's because that's what we buy, that's what we're, that's what we're interested in. And, and of course, the, the challenge with that is, what you feed yourself is what you become, of course. And by the way, very little of what's in the news is really news. It's only in the news because it is the news. It only is the news because it's in the news. That's what I wanted to say. Did you get that? It's only news because they're telling us it's news. And the very fact that, that it's news doesn't really make it true in the first place in many cases. And, and, and actually, I don't know how you're, you're probably aware that, I, I, I mean, I, I, I shop around with, for, for, for news. I want to get a broad picture. And, uh, and I, I've noticed even recently how often it's not news, it's commentary. It's, it's the commentary network, and you can put whatever, whatever name you want in front of it. You're, put your favorite one there. I, I would dare challenge you, in fact. How, what percentage of what you're watching and listening, it's not really news at all, it's someone's opinion about the news. And, and, and if there's someone interviewing someone and they're nodding their head, uh-huh, yeah, yeah, and they're asking questions, often giving the answer to the person, only let the person talk, great interview. <laughs> That's not news. That's commentary. And the truth is, every one of us have bias. I have bias, you have bias, based on where I've come from, where I'm going, what I believe, what I don't believe, and, uh, and we're feeding ourselves with that kind of stuff. Sometimes, I mean, do you ever count up the minutes, well, the week, well, many hours? And, and, and one of the results of that is what's called the echo chamber effect. Heard that term recently, the echo chamber. So you might have noticed if you go to a website these days, most of the time, if you go to my website, there'll be a, there'll be a little thing come saying, accept our cookie policy, and you're expecting to get cookies delivered to you, Right? No, not exactly. And the best way I can illustrate is the old, the old uh, nursery story, uh, fable, the children's story of Hansel and Gretel. Remember, they were being taken in the woods, and, and, and there's different versions of it. Uh, the one I read last night, actually, he picked up white, Hansel picked up white, white stones to lay a path so he could follow it back. And I always thought it was cookies, so that's, that's why I tied it in with this. Was it cookies or stones? Well, I'll let you figure that out later. And, and that's, 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 that's the connection, actually. Uh, what, what, have you noticed that just the other day, I was shopping, I was looking for some tools, a particular tool I wanted for my, this is a great t- time of the year to buy tools, by the way, guys. Come on now. And uh, I was shopping for a particular tool. Have you noticed, I noticed over the next couple of days, everywhere I went, Facebook, uh, uh, Twitter, uh, uh, whatever website I went to, that tool kept popping up. That's not an accident, by the way. That's because when those cookies are little bits of information that tell the, the algorithm, doesn't even tell a person, an algorithm that that's what you want, and if you go after that, if they can sell that to me, they get paid for it. In fact, the very fact I'm looking at it, if I click on it, they even get more. It's, it's, 
It's not about control again. I think there's a lot, a lot, a lot of skepticism, a lot of concern that, that we're being tracked so they can tr- control us. And who knows? There's probably some truth in that. But what they really want is you to buy stuff. And so, and so the more you, you, you're on the internet, the more you're on Facebook, whatever, whatever platform you're using, the more information you're feeding to the algorithms so they can hone in on what you really like. Because if you like what they're giving you, you're going to watch more of it. They can do more advertisement. more advertisement, the more they get paid. It's called the echo chamber. And, and so you may think you're getting a real wide, wide view and broad, broad scope of things going on in the world today, but you're probably not. You're probably being guided by the algorithm that wants to... Does any of that make sense? The point is, when we get, when we get caught up in those things, I think there's some, some part of us that there's an insecurity, almost a fear. I don't want to get left out. If there's something going on in the world today, if, 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 you know, what was it, Chicken Little? The sky is falling, the sky, if the sky really is falling, I want to know about it. And I want to be able to tell you first, in case you haven't heard yet. Oh, I, I, I'm not sure I like these masks at all. I can't tell if you're frowning or smiling. Or, it doesn't really matter, does it? It's the truth. And the fact is, the fact is what we feed ourselves is what we become. Uh, uh, and I'm not suggesting all that stuff is tr- true or false necessarily. Um, and, and in fact, it's very interesting. I was thinking about this, I guess, a couple of days ago. And again, going back to Jesus, the example of Jesus. Uh, Jesus lived in a very heated time politically. You think things are hot here in the United States? And by the way, as, as bad as things are, the sky's not falling. That's my personal opinion. Uh, if you look back on our history, the history of this particular country, we've been in times much worse than this. Um, I'm not talking even in my lifetime. Uh, uh, I mean, contested elections and, and the prohibition thing, the, the roaring 20s, the, the aftermath, the Civil War itself, thousands and thousands, a whole generation of young men basically wiped off our, our, our map and, and, uh, and, and reconstruction afterwards, lynchings and the birth of the Ku Klux Klan. I mean, we've been through some dark times and we've made it and we may well make it through this one again. I, I'm not sure. We, we'll, we don't know. But by comparison, I mean, think of it. You're, 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 you're a Jewish young man or you're a Jewish young woman and you're, you're trying to plan your life and, and people ask you, what do you want to be when you grow up? Well, you, you don't want to have a choice. It's up to the Romans because they're the ones who occupy your nation. The, the, the policemen are, 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 are controlled by the Romans. The governor is either a Roman or, or controlled by the Romans. And, and everything about the situation is pretty, pretty nasty, actually. And yet Jesus had very little to say to the Romans, didn't he? In fact, what he did say about the Romans was, if anyone compels you to carry their sack a mile, that was a legal limit, any soldier could to tell you, you carry my, my knapsack for, 20, for, for, for one mile. If they ask for a mile, give them what? Give them two miles. No, wait a minute, we're talking about the Romans, these, these, the enemies of ours, the ones we despise the most. And Jesus said, given us Caesar, well, I wouldn't go there anymore. You got the point. Had very little, in fact, his anger was pretty much reserved, not for the politicians, but for the preachers. In, in particular, the legalistic Pharisees who were trying to come up with laws and regulations to control us. Man, where do you want to go with that? Uh, my question is, have you become an enzyme sign? And, and I'm, say, I'm saying, if, you, if, you're, if your itching ears compel you, draw you to, to, to all the conspiracies and negativity that's, that's so prevalent in the world today, particularly in the news cycle, whatever you get your news from, whether it's whatever, social media platform or, or network, whatever it is, I've got, I've, got, I've got news for you. The world is coming to an end. It's only a matter of time. And I'm not, I'm not concerned about nuclear war. I'm not concerned about climate change. I'm not saying any of those things aren't real. I, I'm aware of the fact that judgment will come to this planet. That if, in fact, it's been said, if God doesn't judge our nation, our world, for the, for the debauchery in which we're living, he's going to have to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah. That judgment's coming, and that, that ought to be more, a deeper concern to us, so that it, and motivating us then to reach out to others and, and, and share the gospel. So I want to come back to this wise as serpents thing. So I, I don't want to get diverted here. Jesus said, be wise as serpents operating under the radar, aware of what's going on, yet harmless as doves. And building on that, Paul says in Romans, this, I, I didn't realize this until maybe a month or so ago, this particular passage, Romans 16, 17. If you have a Bible, turn to Romans 16, 17. This is, this is really kind of been one of the foundational uh, uh, principles on which I built my, my entire life on uh, since I, I, I was taught it way back in the, in the 70s. Romans 16, 17. Here's what Paul says. I appeal to you, brothers, to watch out for those who cause divisions and create obstacles contrary to the doctrine for which you have been taught. Avoid them. That's kind of the opposite of itching ears, isn't it? 
avoid them. For such persons do not serve Christ, but their own appetites, by smooth talk and flattery, they deceive the hearts of, of the naive. Verse 19 kind of pulls it all together. For your obedience is known to all, so I rejoice over you. I want you to be wise, there's that word again, to that which is good, and innocent to that which is, there's that word again, innocent. Paul's saying the same thing here, Jesus say. He wants us to be wise to the good and innocent to what is evil. Uh, and, and that word innocent is, is a pretty strong word. I, I looked it up, to kind of dig, dig, dig up back, back in the Greek a little bit. It actually means to be unmixed, untampered with. Uh, it's often used for, for metals, for example. If, if you buy a piece of jewelry that it says it's, 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 it's 20 carat or whatever it is, whatever carat, it's, it's a measurement of how pure it is. And Jesus is saying, Paul is saying, he wants us to be so pure for the things of God, so focused on the kings of God, things of God that we don't have time to feed us ourselves with, with all this other stuff. No wonder, it makes more sense now, doesn't it? No wonder Jesus said in Matthew 19, verse, verse 14, Matthew 19, 14, Jesus said, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for of such belongs the kingdom of heaven. What, 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 what one thing would identify children? Innocence. I mean, one common denominator. Kids, kids by, are by their very nature innocent. Um, we, when we lived in Zimbabwe, we, we, we were visiting, uh, my wife and I were visiting a, a, a dear friend of ours uh, for dinner. They invited us for, for dinner, and, and they had a little boy, how old was he, maybe three years old, and uh, he's sitting on Linda's lap, and uh, the whole time he's sitting there, he's kind of pulling on her dress, and then, and then pulling on her blouse, and, and, and she's kind of trying to, <laughs> and, and finally, uh, the father noticed what was going on, and he, and he looked at his son and said, what are you doing? He said, I just want to know how far the white goes. Innocence. Innocence. And that, that's the way ch- children don't know that stuff. They just, they just well, she's just a different color. What, what, I just, I'm just curious. Well, that would be a, an innocence of, of, of us about the things of, of the world, the things, the things that are going on around us. And, and then a wisdom, a passion, a drive to know what God is doing in his kingdom today. 2 Corinthians 10, 10, 5. 2 Corinthians 10, 5. We destroy arguments. The new, the, the new American Standard Version says speculations. We destroy arguments. We destroy speculations. And every lofty opinion that raises its knowledge against the knowledge of God, raises itself against the knowledge of God, and take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. And I want to say in particular, boy, I'm going to read for a couple of moments with the New Living Translation because it just brings this out so clearly. I want to say, uh, uh, let me set the scene. Uh, it, Jeremiah has become probably my favorite my favorite prophet. Uh, I got really kind of, kind of got to know Jeremiah a couple years ago. I, I found myself reading through the book and studying his life. And, and uh, man, it, so many parallels. He was living in Jerusalem knowing that God was going to bring Jerusalem into judgment and, and, and the Jewish people were going to be taken to Babylon. And while all the other prophets were saying, no, God's going to protect us and God's going to bless us. It's going to be great. Um, <laughs> Jeremiah said, no way. Uh, we're going to be captives. And he, he was so popular with his message, he got thrown into a, into a well, up, in, into the mud up to his arms. They had to pull him out after he was nearly starving to death, and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so, so Jeremiah goes against the grain. What everyone else is saying, things aren't going to be wonderful. And he says just the opposite. And here's what, here's what his message was for the prophets. Jeremiah 23, 16. Jeremiah 23, 16. This is what the Lord of heaven's armies says to his people. I like that description. The Lord of heaven's armies. That's not passive at all, is it? Do not listen to the prophets when they prophesy to you, filling you with futile hopes. They are making everything up, they say. They do not speak for the Lord. They keep on saying those who, do, those who despise my word, talk about himself, his, his word about, about captivity. Don't worry. The Lord says you will have peace. And those who stubbornly follow their own desires say no harm will come your way. Jump down to verse 21. I, I'd encourage you to read, read the whole passage, the whole, the whole chapter, but I'm just going to hit the high points. I have not sent these prophets, verse 20, 21, 23, 21. They, they run around claiming to speak for me. I have given them no message, yet they go and prophesy. If they had stood for me and listened to me, they would have spoken my words. They would have turned my people from their evil ways. Interesting. Jeremiah's grief, God's grief with the prophets wasn't so much that... Uh, that, 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 what, what, certainly what, that they were false, but that they were directing their attention to, 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 to encouraging or saying great things about God's people who were obviously needed judgment. They, were, they needed conviction. Let conviction begin the house of God. Verse 25, 20 to 25. I've heard these prophets saying, listen to the dream I had from God last night. And they proceed to tell lies in my name. 
How long will this go on? If they are prophets, they are prophets of deceit, inventing everything they say. Whew, man. Verse 30, 23. Therefore, the Lord says, I am against those prophets who steal messages from each other and claim they're from me. Man, <laughs> if that isn't today. And again, I'm not, I don't have anyone in particular in mind, but a, a bunch could come to mind, I think. They all sound the same, don't they? The internet, I call them the internet prophets. In South Africa, they actually have different grades. There's prophet number one, prophet number two. Uh, I, 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 if I'm going to be a prophet, I want to be a number one prophet. Not, they actually had that on, their, on their, their, their title, prophet number one. And, and the problem is they're, they're all saying the same thing. They steal their messages from each other and claim their message. I'm against the smooth tongues prophets who say this prophecy is from the Lord. I'm against these false prophets. Their imaginary dreams are flagrant lies. They lead people to sin. They do not, I did not send them, appoint them, they have no message for my, at all upon people. I, the Lord, have spoken. Okay. <laughs> if that's relevant at all for today, I want to pay attention. I want to say quickly and passionately, I love the gift of prophecy. Uh, I, love, I, love, I love true prophets. I, 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 I prophesy. In fact, I was just thinking this morning, uh, so many stories kept coming to my mind. Some years ago, I was traveling with Linda and uh, John Dean, actually, in, uh, in Bulgaria. And uh, I was asked to preach at a church fairly large church, meeting in a movie theater there in, 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 in Bulgaria. And uh, as I walked up onto the platform and began to preach, the Lord kind of isolated a particular individual saying, he was sitting right about the middle of the congregation. And the Lord said, I want you to call him out and I want you to pray for him. While I'm preaching, you know, you kind of get this conversation going on. Cause it's a little easier when you've got an interpreter kind of going back and forth, believe it or not. Um, so I did so. I, I called him out and I said, I, I felt I saw a sail over top of him that was blowing the wrong direction. And I, I said, it. I, I, I see a sail, like a, a sail from a ship, and it's pulling in the wrong direction. And uh, he, he was visibly shaken, and, uh, and, and I found out later, he approached me later, he had actually, he actually been a pastor of that church at one point. I had no idea. And he had, he'd, he'd, he'd had struggles, he'd left God, he'd not been coming to church for years. That was the first time he was back in church for many years. So, do I like prophecy? That's a lot of fun, by the way. <laughs> um, so... So the question is, is God saying it? And what are the prophets saying? And, and, and I've talked to several people recently who, are, who have been deeply disturbed over the last couple of months that, that things they, they trusted in that were given to them by prophets, the internet prophets, haven't worked out. And let me encourage you, God is not surprised. He didn't make a mistake. The, pro, the Bible says very clearly, covet to prophesy. Desire earnestly would be a good translation to prophesy. We all should prophesy. But let, while you're, let the others sit back and judge. And, and, and if you're not, you're not willing to be judged, you shouldn't be prophesying. And if you're not willing to say, I missed it, that wasn't from God, then you shouldn't be prophesying. Let's make sure we keep our focus on that which is good. Wise to that which is good and simple to that which is, 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 is evil. Innocent to that which is, is evil. Number, number four, the last one. Seek first the kingdom of God. Seek first the kingdom of God. Uh, it's almost Christmas time. And uh, it's kind of a shame this, this passage in Isaiah 9, Isaiah 9, 6, kind of gets reserved for Christmas. Although we, Dwayne's written a great song that has it and we sing it often. But it just, I have found, I'll just tell you myself personally, in, in the last couple of weeks in particular, with all the turmoil going on in the world around us, in our nation in particular, this is, this is what the Bible says. This is what the prophecy was given. For unto us, Isaiah, Isaiah 9, 6, a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. By the way, shoulder in, in the New Testament, it's, it's, it's an idiom for, for responsibility. He will have responsibility for government. And, and let me just throw in there quickly as well. Uh, I, I, I am grieved personally by all the emphasis in, in, in these, these days on, on us demanding our rights and commanding our rights. Listen, as disciples of Jesus, followers of Jesus, we, I have no rights. My rights are surrendered to Christ. I am crucified with Christ. I am dead. If anything lives, it's Christ in me. But I do have responsibilities. I think we should be doing a lot less time focusing on our rights, commanding and demanding our rights, a lot more time protecting our rights. I mean, you can't do two things at one time. I want to focus on the, my, what am I called to do. The government shall be upon his shoulder. His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, and of the increase. Do you see that? Verse 7. It's happening. I promise you it's happening right now. It may not look like it. It may look like things are all going the wrong direction. And there certainly are some things that are. Uh, of the increase of his government and of peace, there shall be no end. On the throne of David 
over his kingdom to establish it and uphold it with justice and righteousness from this time forward. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. <laughs> Is there any way of misinterpreting what, what he's saying there? Can you hear the heart of God, the, 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 the drive of God, the passion of God? My son is setting up a kingdom. The kingdom of God is increasing. It's already here, uh, increasing. And I, I just want to say, let's participate. Let's get on with building the kingdom of God. We're much more than a remnant. The, 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 the remnant speaks of the Old Testament uh, 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 kingdom, that, 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 that Israeli kingdom. We're, we're, we're citizens of another government. My highest my, my first and tr tr oh, most important loyalty is to the kingdom of my God. Philippians chapter 3, verse 20. And therefore, is, I mean, you, you must be expecting me at some point to go to 2 Corinthians 4, verse 6, if you've been listening to me all the last couple of years. 2 Corinthians 4, 6. Therefore, let, us sh let, shine, let light shine out of darkness. And the reality is if we're caught up with, 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 with being all these distractions around us of all the conspiracies and, and uh, nonsense that's going on, we're not shining. And, and yet, today more than ever. So I'm walking through the airport. Um, I mean, it's been a strange year. Uh, I, I, I remember in, in July when I got on the airplane for the first time after months. I mean, it's not since I came back from, from, uh, from uh, uh, New Zealand in February. Not a single airplane until J July. I mean, by this time last year, I'd already traveled over 100,000 miles. And now it's only a, a fraction of that. Anyway, I, I was actually a little nervous, to be honest with you. I, I wasn't sure I wanted to go out and fly anymore. I, I kind of like being at home. I really like being in my own bed every night, and I really like seeing my wife every night. And, but, but it was all right. And so I got on the plane, and, and I, 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 we, we, we went by Detroit. We stopped in Detroit to change planes. And I'm walking down the... Oh, no, actually, I was actually waiting at the, at the restroom for, for Linda to come out. I noticed there's a lady standing. There's a wide hallway. She's standing dead in the middle and leaning on a, on a crutch. That doesn't take a lot of intelligence to figure out. They said something wrong. And, and, and actually, she, she was standing all alone out in the middle like that. I thought it was kind of odd. And I, I was concerned for her. I said, I, I, I kind of called over, you know, the whole social distancing thing. And, and I'm not trying to be fresh or anything. I just said, are you all right? Can I help you? Oh, she said, no, it's okay. I'm waiting for my husband. I said, well, that's good. What happened? And, and she said she'd had a terrible bicycle accident. You know, the whole bicycle thing, over and over in, and, and she, in, she broke her hip. And uh, I'm, I, I felt the compassion. I felt the presence of God. Glory to God. And, and, and as I finished my conversation, I looked her right in the eye. I said, in the name of Jesus, be healed. Glory to God. And walked away. I, we don't compromise. We don't have to be ashamed. We don't have to be bashful. Just, just a week or so ago, I guess it was this past week, I'm in Lowe's. And, uh, and as I'm leaving, uh, checking out the counter, uh, again, I, I, I wasn't sure what prompted me. Well, there's something I, sometimes it's obvious in the natural. Sometimes it's, it's always there speaking to us. But, but I, I felt like the lady didn't, didn't feel well. I said, are you okay? She said, no, I've got terrible allergies. And whenever the, it had just begun raining, whenever the rain starts up, her allergies go off. I said, oh, really? And as I took my bag from her, I said, I, again, look her right in the eye and said, in Jesus' name, be I, I, don't say that, I don't say I'm going to pray for you anymore. Because usually when we say we're going to pray for, for someone, all too often we don't get around to it. And, uh, and so I, I, because I want to be a, a man of my, of my, uh, on my word, a man of honor, I just do it right there and then. And uh, obviously I don't do that to everyone. I want to be led by the Holy Spirit. And I always wonder as I'm walking away, because often there's a, you can see something's happening in their face. You can see the, the reaction. And, and I always walk away wondering, well, what was that all about, Lord? And, and, and they don't need to know who I am because... You're working. Your kingdom is increasing. On the government, it shall be increasing on his shoulders. Let me sum it up. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me wind this thing down. Two thoughts. Wise to that which you sympathize with. I want to ask you a favor. I, I, please don't bring me a, your latest conspiracy theory. Don't send me the link. Don't, be, don't, don't, don't give me the book. Don't bring it up in conversation because I, I'm probably going to say, yeah, you're probably right. That's, that's cut, when I'm saying that, it really, really means I'm not really paying much attention. I can't afford to. And I'm, I'm not being nasty. I'm not being judgmental. I mean, what they say may be true. That's not the issue. The, the point is, I can only put one thing in my head at a time. And I want to be focused. I want to be laser focused on the kingdom of God. Jesus said, seek ye first the kingdom of God. And its increase, of its increase, there will be no end. I want to encourage you to, to choose what you put into your heart. Because what comes into your head ends up some, at some point in your heart as well. 
Maybe, maybe a fast. I mean, I mean, most of your parents probably have boundaries, screen time. Is that what you call it these days? You give your, your kids screen time, how many hours or how many moments or whatever it is. Uh, I've given myself some screen limits. Only certain times of the day, only for certain amounts of time. And every once in a while, I look up and think, oh, oh, I went over my boundary. Well, I want to read a little bit more, Lord. Uh, he doesn't say anything. He'll let me do whatever I want to do. But what I feed, feed yourself on the word of God. I mean, it's very simple, a little, little equation. Are you feeding yourself at least as much from the scriptures as you are from the internet, whether it's prophets or, or teachings or, or conspiracy theories or whatever it is? What's, what's getting your attention? And, uh, and I, would, I would say the uh, equal is not good enough. Probably one by one. Way, I want to be way overbalanced feeding myself from the scriptures, from the word of God. What does the Bible say? Number two. So number one, please, I, I, I don't want to be rude, but I want to be honest. I'm not interested in the latest conspiracy theories. I mean, they're just so far out anyway, on both sides. I, I literally have talked to people on both sides of the, of the extreme, left and right, and it just, it, it's just... Whoa. The only reason why we believe these things is because we're in an echo chamber, and we're feeding ourselves with all those things all the time. Why they fit? Because they want you to buy stuff. Number two, let me ask you the question. What is your role? What's the vision for, for Bridge of Life? Take the kingdom to the... Take what? The kingdom to the city. What is your role in bringing the kingdom of God to this city, to our city, to Hagerstown. I mean, it, 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 be basic, be, 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 uh, be, be honest. As a father, as a mother, as a son, as a, daughter, as, a, as a student, as a laborer, as a worker, as a secretary, as a, as a medical person, whatever your job is, what are, how is the Lord working through you to bring his kingdom to the, to the people around us, to our city? Uh, please, worship team, would you join me back on the platform? And let me wrap up with Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, any, anything worthy of praise, think on these things. And what you have learned and received in me and heard and seen in me, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. I've talked to several believers that just breaks my heart the last couple, couple of weeks. They're just in turmoil. What kind of a world are we living in? What, what kind of world are my children going to live in? What kind of world are my grandchildren going to live in? Well, the world's dying. It's, 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 it, I don't know if this is the day or yet, quite yet, but I know it's only a matter of time before what, everything we know, as we know it, is coming to an end. And, and that's our opportunity. And rather than being, letting the situations around us cripple us with fear and anxiety. It's real. It's, I'm not saying we're, it's very real. Focus your hearts on the kingdom of God. Take Philippians chapter 4. As your, this is what I'm going to, these are my filters. This is what I'm going to put in my head because I'm going to be ready to extend his kingdom. We're, we're going to worship and maybe you could stand with us uh, as we're closing. And uh, after we do, I'm going to be waiting down front. If you need, if you need prayer this morning, if you're, if you're anxious, you find yourself just kind of maybe even unusually anxious, like what's going on? Why do I wake up in the middle of the night sweating and and why is it I can't, can't hardly fall asleep at night? And, and why, am I, why do I keep getting indigestion and, and, and et cetera? I mean, all of us have different symptoms. Why am I so anxious? It may well be, I'm not, I'm not accusing, I'm just saying, what are you feeding yourself? There's a lot of nonsense out there. True nonsense and, and nonsense, nonsense. And if you don't know Jesus, I mean, particularly for those of you who are joining us via the internet, <laughs> I'm railing on the internet to get, but I actually love the internet. It's a great tool. I'm using it all the time. If you don't know Jesus, if, if, you've, if you've never known the peace of a personal Savior, someone who loves you personally, not just the whole world, but you personally, uh, we would love to pray for you. If you're here today, we'd like to pray for you right now as we're closing. If, if you're not here today, call our office. Call one of us. We'd be, we would love to meet with you. And just pray with you even right on the phone there, if that's more, 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 more acceptable in these days of, of the virus. Jesus is the author of our peace.